Good morning. This is Matt Sexton with the Florida Department of Transportation's Production Support Office, CAD. Welcome to the seventh edition of our Getting Started with FDOT Connect for Open Roads Designer. And today we have John Mark Palacios uh, covering super elevation and design criteria for open roads. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to John Mark and uh, go ahead. Hi. Um... So I'm going to be talking about super elevation design criteria. Now this big change with ORD, these are actually going in the same file, so they relate more than we think. Um, a lot of the a lot of the setup is going to be going in the alignment file for both of these. So we're going to going to go walk you through a presentation, and then we're going to uh, do a little bit of a demo, at least the super elevation part. So you have two choices really with when it comes to horizontal vertical geometry. Now you can remember the standards, all of these standards, or that's a lot to remember, or you can just use our criteria checks that are built into the software. So we've tried to automate a lot of things for you, try to make your life a little bit easier and increase productivity across the board. So let's look at the data that we need to collect first for for the FDM for the horizontal geometry, uh, there's a few considerations. Now, there's two different types of super elevation. Basically, the the max super elevation rates. You have the low speed and high speed for roadways. Uh, but for shared use paths, they don't really get super elevated. But we do have one in there. Essentially, you can do a two percent. You can go either way. So you could effectively have a super elevation on those. So uh, really, there's three if you count the shared use paths and um, then you also need to know the roadway type. Now, this is basically referring to which chapter of the FDM that you're using. The arterials or collectors is uh, chapter 210, I believe, and interstate and ramps is 211. Then shared use paths going to be using chapter, I believe it's uh, 224. And, of course, you need to know the design speed and what type, whether it's new construction or triple R. Now, for vertical geometry, we need some of the same information, but we also need a little bit more. Roadway type, there's a little bit more detail just because there's some differences between uh, freeways versus interstate and ramps. So I just need to know a little more specifics. We also need to know the context classification. This is a, this is a big extra one, so I just need to know the context classification of the road. Uh, some of the some of the vertical criteria is dependent on that, but these are lumped together in these in categories like this. So it really, just needs to know if you know if it's like C1 or C2, uh, it's going to be in the same standard. And of course, we need to still need to know design speed, whether it's a new construction or triple R. And we also are going to need to know the you know whether it's curb and gutter or flush shoulder. And if it's a shared use path, you need to know a little bit more. You need to know something about the grade, whether it's, uh, whether it's uh, well, actually, you need to know what the controlling grade is. Now, for super elevation, similar information. We need that, of course, that super elevation max rate, the design speed. Also, especially if it's a roadway that is uh, high speed, or, category roadway, we're going to need to know the number of lanes per direction. And there's a few different pivot methods. There's a lot more in ORD that you're going to see than there used to be in SS4. So hopefully super elevation, we have a lot more options to make sure that we're meeting the standards or meeting the, your specific needs for your project. Uh, you not only can just rotate about the center line, but you can also go, you know, divide it inside or crown a, a few different options. So I'm going to walk through the process with screenshots here. So first thing, when you do create file, you're going to select your alignment file. Now that's going to create, it's going to create the super elevation model as well as model for your alignments. So to create an alignment, what you'd want to do, if you want to use the standards, you can use the design standards toolbar, which by default shows up below the ribbon. 
it's uh, this toolbar, sorry. And these two drop downs is going to be your horizontal and your vertical. So we're looking at the horizontal first. And if you don't have that toolbar up, you can bring it up in the geometry tab of the ribbon. And under standards, you select the design standards toolbar and it will bring this up. So you can see, you know, any of these drop downs basically for the horizontal, all you have is the design speed under these different drop downs. So you have shared use paths, that's just one. Uh, you can see low speed, you have a few options. You have the triple R, you have the min length, and you have the desired length. I will explain what the difference is between the min length and the desired length is. That's referring to, well, I created this cross chart to show exactly what it's referring to. So basically, here's the standards that we have. Uh, for high speed, we have these three. For low speed, we have these three. Interstates and ramp, shared use paths, there's a few different ones. Uh, I mean, there's there's fewer. There's just the, those options. There's not different categories within that. But the min length one is referring to, if you can see, it's, it's uh, the minimum length and the default radius are a little bit different. They're referring to, it's, but it's really referring to the minimum length based on this table in the FDM. Whereas the desired length, this is based on the table for speed. And I think I do have the FDM open here. I can show you real quick. So this table is table 210.8 something. The length of horizontal curve right here, 210.8.1. So you can see it is desired length based on speed. There's desired length based on deflection angle. Now we don't actually count this, so you're going to have to check this yourself. Uh, this is a limitation of the software for already. If that really bugs you, you'd have to use a different program, like Civil 3D, I think, can calculate that. But ORD, we're not sure how, that it can do it at this point. They're adding a lot of new features, so they may add that at some point. SS4 wasn't able to do this one either. But we check for desired length based on design speed. And if it, the note says that if you can't meet that, you can get the greatest length, but not less than 400. So the minimum length standard is saying, well, you can't meet this. Uh, you can't meet this in this particular case. It's this is a this table is set up for 30 mile an hour design speed just to show you comparison for all the standards. Uh, so in this case, at 30 mile an hour, the desired one is 450, but the minimum is 400. So that's that's the difference between desired and minimum. Uh, there will also some differences where the desired length will by default put in the radius for a normal crown instead of the instead of the minimum radius for super elevation and you can change this but this is just if you're using the tools that automatically put in the radii for you it's going to default to this to start with if you're using desired length if you want to use minimum length and uh, default to the the tightest radius that you can get you can do that as well but chances are this is not going to meet the minimum length of the curve so that's what that's the only reason that this is going to start out differently, but the minimum will still show accordingly. So the, the message will be different. If you're not meeting the default, it'll say it's, just doesn't, it's not the default. If you're not meeting a minimum, it'll say it'll be a little warning message. So it's a little bit a stronger message and it'll say, hey, you're not meeting the minimum radius. All right, so the vertical standards, let's take a look at those. Uh, it's a little bit more complex here, but in short, you're going to basically you click on this drop down on the right drop down on the standards toolbar, and you can see that mostly it's context class, and then of course you got interstate ramps. Uh, there's a separate category for triple R, and then there's the one for shared use paths. Uh, this is only showing up twice just because this file was already. Once you bring it in, it shows the active design instead of just the ones from the library, uh, but you, you'll only see it once in a clean file. So here's kind of view and explore, so you can see some of what would show up in the drop downs here. Since I, I can't really get a screenshot showing you everything here, but here's kind of a sample. So under, if you expand out rural curve and gutter, you're just going to see those design speeds that would that would apply. Now, 
since uh, C1, C2, I think has a design speed range, you're not gonna see uh, anything lower than this in the context class. So we have just those design speeds. Uh, whereas like C5, C6 urban, really it's it's just between 25 and 35 mile an hour. So you'd see those design speeds. Uh, shared use paths is a different one. So all of these are gonna have design speeds under it, whatever applies. So you just select the context class, select your design speed. Shared use path, you gotta select the maximum controlling grade. Uh, and this would usually be the downhill grade that controls. Now you can also, once you select these standards, and you can select just the horizontal if you're just doing horizontal geometry, or you can go ahead and select them both that apply. You can toggle these as the active design standard. So here's here's the first tool on here is the set design standard. Now if you already have one on there, you can remove it. And if you click on the alignment and right click and bring up properties or use the information tool in the ribbon, you can um, just right click. If you expand this out, your complex element, you'll see if there's a design criteria applied. In this case, there was a shared use path criteria. So you can right click and remove it if you need, if you got the wrong one, or you can you can change it. Uh, but if you just want to clear it out, or you're having issues, you can always remove it and then apply it from from a fresh alignment. Oops, went ahead. So you would select your standard, just click select this set design standard, and then just pick on your alignment, and it would set whatever's set on here. Uh, you can also, so if you do toggle active, you can design, you know, if you don't have an existing alignment and you want to design it from scratch, you can toggle this as an active standard, whatever whatever you select. And then you can go in, there's a lot of, you can really use any of these tools and it'll, it'll if applicable, if it's putting in curves, it'll default to the radii. Uh, but one you can use is complex by PI and that'll, that'll draw it with automatically putting in the radii. So I'll see some screenshots of that. So that one will basically bring up this dialogue here. If you just, you just basically click your PIs and it automatically puts in the curve. In this case, I think we chose, uh, looks like low speed minimum length. So it's going for that 286 foot, which is the minimum radius with, uh, with a 5% super elevation. And so, so it automatically checks this box and fills this in for you. So you just click the PIs and it'll drop those curves in. Now we just drop this in and right away we see a little warning symbol here. So what's going on? Well, it checks the radius for you. It doesn't set the length for you. That is just doing by check. So if you hover over it or you bring up the civil message center, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, but if you hover over it, you can see the message as well. So here in this case, it says arc length is shorter than the minimum value. Now you can see that it, here's a just a table that is coming from, by the way, the 286 feet. Uh, but you know, this is coming from a different table. This is coming from this uh, table I was showing you earlier for the length of the horizontal curve. So it's the design standard value is 400. So this is a minimum length one. So we're using this number, but the actual, it's putting in about 186. So you'll just have to go in and change the radius until this length of 400 feet is met. And this error message will go away at that point. Or sorry, I should say warning message. But again, you may want to use, I just showed minimum length here. You may want to use desired length first just to see if you can meet it. And then if you can't, maybe you want to drop down to minimum length since that's the way the standards are set up. So the other way to view the messages are from the civil message center. If you go to the geometry tab in the ribbon and then under standards, click on that drop down, you'll see civil message center. And it brings this up. This should look familiar if you're used to SS4. Pretty much the same way. You'll want to turn off the microstation messages if you just want to see these. So just check, the, click on here, get rid of those, and then you you'll see uh, errors and warnings. And here, you know, we get a warning for arc length shorter, but there's an error for the arc radius being less than a minimum. So it's kind of a 
kind of a bigger deal. So let's go to vertical design standards. Uh, so vertical design standards, similarly, now we're already, su supposing we already set the toggle, we've already toggled on the active standard, we've already toggled on the vertical design standards. So once you do that, you can use the profile complex by PI, or again, anything that's giving you a curve, a vertical curve, should automatically set the radii. But in this case, this is the one that's similar to the horizontal alignment tool. You just click on the PIs and it automatically puts in the vertical curves for you. So you can check that. It'll check the box. In this case, you know, based on the standards we selected, it automatically set in a K value of 31. And so we, you know, just click your PIs and it's putting it in for you. Kind of, oh, sorry, this is the, this is a horizontal alignment. Here's your, your vertical alignment. So you just click your PIs and you can see it's putting it in. Error messages are going to work pretty similarly and they should show, uh, I don't think I have a screenshot of that one, but they'll show up with the error, with a warning symbol or an error symbol here, or you can also view it in the civil message center. Uh, if you need to remove the standard, you can just click on the vertical profile and uh, bring up properties and you'll see it. If you expand it out, you'll see the standard and you can remove it if you want to apply something from scratch or what have you. Uh, so if you want to set a design standard, you would just, uh, you can, if you cleared it out or even if you have an existing one, it should be all right. Uh, just use that same tool as before to set design standard and you're just going to pick the in the profile model. You're going to pick the profile. So let's take a look at super elevation now. Now, this is already has a few new features now. The design criteria, pretty much the same as in SS4. So if you're familiar with, if you use the design criteria in SS4, I don't think anything has changed actually. I think it's pretty much identical. Uh, it's just the tools, uh, location for the buttons moved around, that's all. Super elevation, there's a couple new features. Uh, so one of the things you're gonna wanna do first is make sure your super elevation flag is set up in the template. If you set up these from the get-go, before you even start trying to apply super elevation, you'll you'll be able to automate some things so that it'll make it a little easier. So you open up your create template dialog and look at the points. In this case, we have our edge of pavement point and just make sure that super elevation flag is checked. And there's an easy way to check to see where, what flags are on. If you go to active template tab in the create template and open up super elevation points, it will highlight all of these. If you have your super elevation points selected, it'll highlight your super, whatever has the super elevation flags on. So in this case, we have the, uh, I think there's a grade break here and uh, edge of payment and PGL. And then this is something we've added here. So you want to, in this particular one, if you've ever gone through our 3D modeling template, this is pretty much set up the same way for the State Road 61. And um, so we have a divided roadway, or you can have crossovers here. But this null point is what we created. This center line is a, actually a null point. Uh, this helps you take advantage of some of the new tools to rotate about different locations. But you, you want to have a, a basically a null point in the center line, even if you have switches like this. Uh, you still want to track that center line. So in this case, it's just set up at the default 2%. Uh, and then these are actually tied to the, to that null point at a default of 2% or whatever it happens to be for your roadway. But just you just have that null point and then you can rotate the whole roadway or you can rotate about these points. It gives you more options of where you rotate about. And this, of course, this point is still going to be present whether you have a traffic separator, whether you have a divided median, all of these are going to drop down that place, but that null point is still going to be in the same place. It's still going to be 2%, so if you need to rotate it, it'll rotate. Or you can use a, I guess you can use a slope, or you can use a vector offset setting. Either, either one of those should work fine. So to create your super elevation, you want to be in your alignment file. It should create the 
it'll create the super elevation model for you. Uh, you want to just make sure you reference in your design file. You'll probably want to reference in your model as well. Actually, you do want to reference in your model as well. And I'll, I'll go through, I'll we'll do a walkthrough of this, uh, but we're going to go through the presentation first. So the tool you want is, this is under the uh, corridors tab. I think all these tools are under the corridors tab for super elevation. So the first one, you just create super elevation sections. Uh, if you use, haven't used this tool, you can just click the button. If you've used it recently, it changes whatever the button is. This is one of the SS4 behavior, or sorry, ORD behaviors. Uh, whatever you click from the drop down, it's going to change that. So you may want to click the drop down, create super elevation sections if you're going ahead here. Uh, so once you, you create super elevation sections, you would just locate your corridor or alignment. This is an interesting one. So you can select, here's one of the new options you have. You can select the alignment, do it the same way you did an SS4, or you can also do a corridor, uh, and I'll show you how that one works. Uh, but the screenshots here, we're selecting an alignment. And you can give it the minimum tang length will actually split it into different sections. So, for example, if you have multiple design speeds, uh, you may want different sections, and you can set the criteria differently on those sections. But that'll that'll automatically do it just based on distance between curves. Uh, you can leave it at zero in this case. We just have one curve, so not worried about it. So you got a few different options here. So you got the you can do create super elevation lanes. This will work pretty much the same way as it did in SS4. Select the alignment, uh, but you also have the create super elevation lanes by road template. So in this case, you can it'll automatically create the lanes for you. So this is why you, we set up the super elevation flags ahead of time in your template. So if you do this tool, super elevation lanes by road template, it'll ask you to select the template. So this would be whatever template you're using for your for your model. And then you can, uh, so in this case, we did we did the select the alignment, but then we went straight to the create super elevation lanes by road template. Uh, select the template that you're using in your, your model, and it automatically will pick up, looks at these points, so it'll bring up, so if you bring up this uh, this dialog with the three dots, it'll bring this dialog up, you select your template. And it'll automatically put in the lanes for you based on the points and the super elevation flags. Now, if it misses some, don't worry, you can just add it add a super elevation lane manually because I, I added glitch out uh, when I was doing the walkthrough so it's fine we can we can do it manually too but it it tries to automate it so it makes your life makes it a little bit quicker for you uh, next command you go over here to calculate super elevation so that's the second button over here and you click calculate under it it's going to ask you for the rules file and you're going to select the f dot rule file, it's a XML file, just, there's only one in the folder it'll take you to, so it should be straightforward. And then it's going to bring up this calculate super elevation window with a, a lot of different settings. First you want to select the the E selection, this is your, your max super elevation rate, uh, so whether it's high speed roadway, low speed roadway, or the shared use path, just select the appropriate one for your project. Next selection is going to be the L selection. So there's three choices here. If it's a shared use path, you want to use a speed table. If it's a high speed, you're going to select whether it's the two, four lanes, six lanes, eight lanes. You select the number of lanes if it's high speed. If it's a low speed, just select the low speed one. So that's just keep in mind speed tables for shared use path those and everything else is pretty much self explanatory and then design speed is going to change based on what you select up here and there's a few different range so for for high speed we only go down i think to thirty um even though really you don't have high speed thirty to forty five but these are in here in case you do need them for some reason I haven't been able to think of a reason you would but some of the sta some of the standards have, have been set up that way. The tables have been set up that way in the FDM, so we set it up that way in the criteria. So you can see shared use path. We have 1830 
the low speed, we have 25 to 45 few different design speed ranges. Next option you're going to have is a pivot method. Uh, there's a lot of choices here. Well, this is another new feature. And the, the diagrams kind of help you out here. So, okay, this crown, uh, and you also have center lines. So there's actually a couple differences here. These are pretty similar, but it's just where it at. it's going to rotate about. You can choose there. But then you, you also have, you can go inside edge, you can do outside edge, left edge, right edge, or divided inside. If you have divided roadway, you might want to do this. Uh, you know, it depends on which uh, which standards apply, because I know there's some differences based on the width of the roadway, whether it's high speed or low speed. You can also check the box here to open the editor. Uh, this is, the editor is also is pretty much the same as it was in SS4, uh, so I don't think I have screenshots of it here. But you can you can use it to create reports, you can use it to do a CSV file, uh, to export it, and then run your calculations manually in Excel and then import it back in. Uh, if you don't trust the if you don't trust the transition numbers or you want to double check it or, or run it yourself. Once you have that set up, then you switch over to your model file. So notice we're in the MODL file. And then we go back to this quarters tab, the super elevation section, and under the calculate drop down, you want to select assign to corridor. So it'll bring up this dialog once you select you select assign to corridor, pick on your corridor, and it's going to bring up this dialog trying to pick all the points for you. Uh, so you want to just double check to make sure it's right because it's it. I think most of the time it's probably not going to get all these right. It's going to try to guess. It's going to try, uh, but you'll just want to make sure so the pivot point is, you know. For example, this is the super elevation lane from the null point in the center to the left edge of pavement. So we have this lane right here in kind of the median area. So the pivot, it's pivoting about the center, null point, and the super elevation would be the uh, the edge of pavement. This uh, this one here. the median edge of pavement, I should say. And then once you once you run that, the cross-section is applied and you can go ahead and open up a cross-section view and you can see your cross-section, how it looks. So now I'm gonna do a walkthrough. Switch over to ORD here. All right, so I have my alignment file open. I've already I've already attached. I'm in the super elevation model. Um, by default, you won't have a 3D view. It, it creates that when you attach a model that has a 3D. Uh, so it it already created one because I had already played around with this file. But so you want to go to your attach references. In this case, you, you do want to make sure you've attached the alignment because you're going to need to be able to select the alignment. So I've already attached that. I attached my design file, which has all my 2D geometry. And uh, that, of course, got attached by default. So I do want to attach the MODL file. So in this case, uh, yeah, I think it's this one. And... Yeah, that should be all I need. Just take the default model and click OK. So this will allow me to use that other option, which is the uh, create super elevation, which allows me to select a corridor instead. Excuse me, instead of just the alignment. So I've attached that in. I've attached my alignment. I've attached my design file. So in this particular case, we actually have, um, in this model file, we set up the uh, inside corridor, then we have our outside. Left and right as separate corridors. So the super elevation is only going to apply to that inside one. So I'm going to do create super elevation sections. OK, 
can name it whatever you want. I'll name it State Route 61. You can give it a feature definition. There's a super elevation feature definition here. I'm going to name that SR61 there too. Then I ask, okay, locate corridor alignment. So in this case, I'm going to grab the handles of this corridor. And so when you're doing it by corridor, it's also asking for the rules file. So this one's a little bit different. It's asking for the rules file in this section here. So I'm going to go ahead and select my rules file, click three dots. F dot super elevation, that's what I want. It's going straight into creating sections. So I would need to select, uh, if I remember correctly, so this is a low speed. So yeah, I'm going to use the 5%, oops. 5% low speed. I'm going to set this to low speed. I think their design speed is 45 miles an hour. And pivot method for this. You got your choices. I'm just going to leave it on crown right now. And we'll accept the other options. And it created our lens. So did it get everything? So notice we have, and it actually names it by the point. So this goes from the F, left PGL in to the left P, pavement, edge of pavement out. And then this one goes from center line null to left PGL. Well, it's missing one here. So we're gonna have to create that one manually. And it has this one from the right PGL to the right pavement out. So let's create it manually. We're just gonna do create super elevation lanes. So when you do it, when you do it by selecting alignment, it'll create a blank section for you. Uh, when you're doing this by selecting the corridor, it will it'll automatically just go straight to putting the lanes in. So we're going to do create super elevation lanes. That's the tool, same tool you would use if you if you had a blank section. You locate the section and um, you got to find the handles for it. See, it's this box here. It's actually it's actually in green. So I'm going to select that section uh, and I'm going to reset to complete because I only have one section. I'm going to name this, um, you can name it according to the points if you want. I'm just going to name it median right. So I don't have to remember the point names right now. It's going to be on my right side. It is primary. And I believe it's 11 feet wide and we're going to say it's a normal 2% cross slope. This is going to be whatever slope you set between your centerline null point or and your uh, PGL. In this case, I believe it's 2%. So that's what I'm putting. And your offset would be here. So in, in this case, it's right on the center line, so it's zero. But if, you, if you're starting here, it would be, say, 11 feet, whatever it is. You can change it easily if it's wrong. So I'm going to accept all those. We have one problem. So this gives you a this gives you a quick way to tell which way it's sloped. So green is actually sloped in that direction. So it's sloped down that way. And the yellow is sloped down this way. Well, obviously this needs to be yellow because it's green. So I just put, forgot to put my negative sign. So if I click on it, I already have the properties open, but if you don't have it open, you can just click on it. Two ways, you can bring up properties here change it here or you can bring up the window right click on it sorry you can't right click on it you can click on it and bring up the eye tool which is buried in here the icon change from ss4 parent properties so this just needs to be normal cross slope and negative two percent now it changed to yellow. Now it already calculated this before I put these lanes in, but I'm gonna have to rerun this calculation because it didn't have that lane. So you can see it, it did put some values in here, tried to do some numbers. So I'll rerun this in a second. So let's go to corridors. So we did all these that we're done with that. We'll go to calculate section. So in this case, I wanted to, 
I'm going to open up the editor first. So you can do reports in here. Um, let me show you the editor. So supervision editor would be this little drop down, this, this little icon in the top right of the super elevation section. Super elevation editor. It's going to ask you for the section. In this case, like I said, I already applied some super elevation. So I want to clear this out. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to show you the export tools real quick. So if you want to export, you've got a few options over here. You can go to, um, or sorry, this would be the import tools in here. Your export tool is from the report. The import super elevation transitions here. So if you happen to have an Excel file, you can just select that file. Well, I don't have one yet because I haven't exported it. So we'll come back to that. So the first thing I need to do is, is you can clear this out. So if you're going to re-import it, you probably want to clear these all out. And then you'll just delete them. So in this case, this is also a way to reset it. So in this case, I'm just going to reset. Notice how these colors change. So now I'm going to rerun the calculations. Just go over to calculate super elevation. Click on this section. Set my rules file. Make sure all these options are set like they should be, low speed, 45 mile an hour. Accepting through all of these. Now it's bringing up my editor and now it should have the super elevation applied to all these lanes. Now I'm not checking right now to see whether these are, to see whether these are accurate. There are a few issues, especially if you have multi-lane ones, uh, where these transitions don't come up right. So you'll, you should double check those numbers. It's just because the way a microstation historically and still calculates the super elevation transitions don't really match up with the way the FDOT standards are ask you to do the transitions. So that's where it comes in handy to do the export to Excel. Uh, you can check the numbers in here if you want. It'll tell you, you know, this is your normal crown, and it's on this, uh, it's on, this is your super elevation lane that you're on, and the station you're at, what the slope is there. In this case, we only get up to about three. So full super is at 3.3%. So let me show you for the reports, if you want to do an export, you would go to your super elevation report button right here. It's going to ask you to locate the first super elevation section. So just grab that section, reset to complete. It's going to open up this little window. And um, now this isn't very pretty. You can go to the tools, format options. We're going to change this to, uh, where's my is your station delimiter so it should be uh, that one that formats our stations to look correctly uh, so you got this report but if you want to go to Excel you would want to actually use a super relation to CSV this file here and then you just do file save as and now this is not where I want to save it you want to probably save it in your project folder or work set folder. I'm in the super elevation roadway. Now it's going to default to XML. You don't want to do that. You actually want to save it as a text file because a CSV is a text file, not an XML. So I'm just going to call this super elevation. Go ahead and give it the .csv extension. Make it easier to open in Excel later. That way you can just double click. Uh, one or does already exist. I'm just going to call this evaluation two. Let's CSV. Then you can go into Windows Explorer, open that up. See, so it shows as Excel file. You can just double click on it if it has that dot CSV extension. Make your edits here, save it, and then we can re-import it. So, let's say let's say I do want to make some edits. I'll just change 
let's say, okay, let me round this station to a nice even number, 706 plus zero zero. I'm gonna try to keep the same format in here. And so we'll just look for that one change. You can see, I'm gonna save that. And I'm switching back over to ORD, and then I'm gonna open up my super elevation editor. Click on the section. I'm gonna delete all these. Now I'm gonna import super elevation transitions. Select my file name. Now this is just taking me to the wrong folder. That's why there was nothing in there before. There's the one I just exported. Accept that. And notice this station changed like we told it to. So now it's 706 plus zero zero. It's at that, you know. So you can just check if you if you have your own spreadsheet set up, you can use those and just make sure it ends up in a format that'll import back in. Now let's verify our super elevation. So we have we have this set up. We need to assign it to our corridor. So I'm going to open up my model file now. Once you've done, once you've verified the calculations look correct, then you can bring up your model file, and we need to attach it first of all. So I have my view set up with the cross section view. So let me shrink that down so you can see a little bit better. All right, so I already have a cross section view open of this corridor. I don't have any super elevation applied right now. Um, if you see here. Let me get down. I'm in the middle of the curve and it's still a normal slope. So let me go over to the quarters tab and under the calculate drop down for super elevation. I want to do assign to corridor. Oops, getting ahead of myself. Won't do any good if you don't have your super elevation attached. So go to the home tab and just do the attach reference. Let me make sure my right view selected should be your, your 2D view. Attach reference. And I'm going to attach the alignment file. And make sure to select the model, super elevation model, because I already have the alignment attached as my alignment. But this time I'm attaching the super elevation model. And there it shows my lanes in here. I'm going to leave that on, but if you if you need to if they're in your way later, you just go in and, and turn a view off uh, if you need to make edits to your corridor. But right now I need to select it, so I need that view on. You zoom in on here so you can see the changes. So you can see I have a complete corridor. I've got my I got my pavement, I got medians, sidewalks. Uh, it's more or less complete. It needs some detail modeling, but for super elevation, the corridor is in there and you you can see the changes that get applied. All right, so now we go to corridors tab. Click on that calculate drop down and do assign to corridor, the last option. It's gonna ask you to locate the section. So now I select that, reset, right click to reset. Then ask you to locate the corridor. Well, here's where I have the first problem because that's in my way, but let's see if I can grab this handle. There we go. So I'm grabbing the handle of the corridor here. So it tries to associate. So let's check if this look right. It's definitely not. A couple of these, it, a couple of these it left blank, so it didn't get all of them. Uh, so pivot is a PGL. Stabilization edge of pavement. That's right. Pivot is a null point. It's from here to the PGL. That's right. To so the medium right, this should be pivoting about the null point, and then the super elevation is going to be the right PGL in. And on this one, uh, the pivot point should be the right PGL in, and the super elevation point would be the right pavement EOP out. So it's from here to here. 
and I got rid of that little warning message so we know that looks right and then click OK whenever whenever this look good and it'll reprocess reprocess the corridor so I'm gonna give it a second and look since I already had my cross-section view open it already did these for me so there they are now this this glitched over here just because these grades changed I just need to add a key station in to fix that that's not a huge deal but the main thing is the, the super elevation is in there so you can check to make sure it's doing it right you see oops not what I wanted so here's our normal roadway slope then you can see that it starts to go into super as we're as we're approaching the curbs, here's our transition area right here. We're coming into it. When it's white here, this is at zero. So yeah, you can see the left side is basically almost zero percent. Right side is still a normal cross slope. Then we're starting to go into super here. Oh, we're starting to. It's about reverse crown. Now we're in full super. So I think that wraps it up for the demo. Could address any questions now. I'm gonna put this up while I'm waiting. If anybody needs my contact info. Can we assign and report on different design speeds to different sections of the alignment? Yes. So that's where that's where the different sections would come in. Uh, so. I don't have one set up with uh, with multiple curves, but if you have multiple curves and you have multiple design speeds for the super elevation, you do the different sections. Um, sorry. So if you're doing the design criteria, I'm not sure if the question was related to design criteria or super elevation. Uh, if you do design criteria, it's a little bit more tricky, uh, and I think you would have to. What what I would probably do is just open up the alignment file is just apply one check check the messages uh, and then apply the other because it all it's really doing is just checking your work now you could split your alignment that'd be another option but if if for whatever reason you you'd rather have continuous alignment uh, then that's that's the best I can think of is I would just change that alignment so let me go into your alignment views here So in this one, I believe we have a design standard set. Yeah, so it's my low speed desired length. And let's say I wanted to Oh, my toolbar is open right here. Say say I wanted to change that, I could just go in and remove this or let's say I want to So you can see okay, I got the ones the messages for this. Uh, but let's say maybe this this section over here is a different design speed, which in this roadway I think we looked up it actually is supposed to be, but we we've started with just one speed. So I want to check to see if there's any messages that would come up there. I can just go in and set my design standard. I think that was still open. So I'm going to set this to a high speed desired length, 50 mile an hour. And I'm just looking at the horizontal. And then I'm going to do, this is the set design standard button. And I'm just going to change this one. Now it replaced it. So you can't have more than one applied, uh, but you know, I can just check. So in this case, well, I get the warnings. These are different now because it's based on the, uh, you know, this one is just less than default. So actually you have more room because it's 10% super max. So you have more room to to work with there. But that's just the, telling you it's, it's going to need super elevation. No messages over here, but if you, you know, it's it's been applied. So if, if there's any that are relevant, 
you can just look at them in the relevant section and then just change it as as you need uh, so that'd be one way to deal deal with that you could also uh, you could also make a copy of it whether it be different models and then just have uh, the just to have the warning saved um, a few different ways you could do it but I think the easiest just change it as as you want to check it okay uh, next question is can you review which files you are working in how is it organized I'm not sure I if I might need more clarification but if you want to step through generally that so the alignment is in your ALG and RD file and then your model is in your MODL RD and I have a few and then I have the design so the design the DSG and RD is just the 2D and we've we've been pushing this transition but some of the manuals uh some of the data sets have been dated so some of the videos you see or what have you for ss4 have us doing the model in the design file that's not really the rec that's not the recommended practice so recommended is you put the model in a separate modl file uh, you can have more than one if you have more than one model uh, you, if you want to split it up that's fine too you're just going to want one modl rd master file so anybody reviewing it can just open that one and it references all the other models in and then we also have the uh, yeah that's really the, all I'm working in here so I have the design this is just the 2d alignment has both so this one let me bring up the models here this one has my default model which is the alignment and then it has my super elevation model so it just has those two models in there in your alignment here vertical geometry that's a, also the expectation now i thought that question meant something completely different and uh now it's much more clear <laughs> okay um do you have to set a super elevation lane for median separators or do they just adjust as the lanes on each side of them rotate in this case, I have to set a super elevation lane because I set up with that center line null point. Now, I suppose if you didn't set it up that way, you, know, you first of all, you're going to lose the ability to to do any of the other options. Uh, but I think you can still rotate uh, it's the same way you were doing in SS4. So you could probably get by with not creating these lanes. Uh, it's really just going to depend if you want to use any options, but the uh, center line rotation you actually want that null point to be able to have more control over it so it, it depends how your template's set up okay uh, can you design Gore's super elevation I think you have a lot more options that should help you out um, that's going to be a trickier one because um, you get a lot of variable widths there if you have a situation that you need us to help you work through I would say give us a call because that's that's a complex one I don't think I can answer that mm. at this one when creating super elevation lanes what is the purpose of the auxiliary lane type I believe the auxiliary lane would be say you have a right turn lane for example so it's not going the whole length of the project and but it's on the curve so you want it to to match or or somewhat control so I think that's typically what your auxiliary lane would would be for excellent is the intent to still present super elevation transition information on the profiles or will there be a change to present this information in the plans uh, well at this point the intent would be you're going to be showing it the same way the plans are going to be showing it the same way uh, unless you're getting into next gen plans which is a whole another mm. which is a whole another thing and of course in next just next gen plans I think all bets are off and uh, a lot of things will be changing. Superelevation would probably be shown in the model, but. And it looks like we have probably time for one more question. Is there an issue when lane widths are greater than 12 feet? There should not be. So in this particular case, this one actually includes the bike lane, uh, and it so there shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the where there might where you might run into an issue. Uh, only thing I could think of is in that high speed. One, it may not do the superelevation transition calculations correctly because it's very finicky about it does take into account lane widths and it's more finicky. So you may want to just double check the transition lengths and and do those calculations uh, by hand at this point. 
Excellent. Okay. Uh, it looks like the questions that have not been answered, you answered in the video now, well, which brings me to another point. We are recording this webinar. The video of this webinar will be posted to our posted webinars section of our website within about a week. So if you're looking to review this or share this webinar with a colleague, you can find it on the CAD Office website under Posted Webinars under the Getting Started with F.Connect for Open Rose Designer section. All right, well, thank, thank everyone for uh, joining us today. Um, this has been part seven of our Getting Started with F.Connect for Open Rose Designer. We will have another webinar in two weeks on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. The topic for that one is going to be part eight, traffic plans and automated quantities. So we will be discussing what we have so far for traffic plans and automated quantities in two weeks on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Thanks again for joining us.